It was like one of the most gut-wrenching things I'd ever seen. And I feel my body lift up off the bed and move, you know, a couple feet to the left, and then you fall back on the bed. 25 watts, please. I'm getting shocked by this thing. I'm having this crash course in death. I never know when it's going to be our last day with him. Every human being has a story. And we intersect with that story at some of the most dramatic times in people's lives. Oh, my gosh. Oh, babies, 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 always babies. Yeah. I can't get the smile off my face. I got two baby girls. That's crazy. She's beautiful. She's perfect. She's a blessing. This baby is going to be in the best possible hands. Sharp Memorial Medic 412. Massive scalp avulsion. Revealing what was underneath, which is essentially skull. He can't feel the left side of his body and no movement in the left lower extremity. Part one of a long journey. This whole story, if it was fiction, you would say it's totally impossible. These are stories of real people. These are stories of the Sharp experience. Hey, 911 emergency, what are you reporting? I just witnessed a huge accident. Severe rollover. You got two patients. The father's pinned in the vehicle. The driver doesn't look like they're moving, and there's a kid on the ground. Motor vehicle accident had a, has a massive scalp avulsion. There was also a child involved. What's your name? He says that he can't feel the left side of his body and no movement in the left lower extremity. Kevin, driver of a truck. Unknown while he rolled over. One, two, three. Kevin, do you have a son, Luke? He's a man. He is your man. And Children's Hospital just called. They said he's doing great. I got a phone call, and she said, I just want to tell you first that your son is OK, but he's here with us. He's been admitted today. And of course, I started crying. and. Um, the vehicle went across the uh, other lane of traffic and up onto the center median, the race center median, traveled on the center median. That threw the truck in the air, and then once, as it came back to the freeway, it started rolling. And then the truck just flipped. We're on the way. My boyfriend Parker and I started sprinting towards the accident. Cars scattered everywhere, dust flying around. Saw Kevin hanging out the door. His head was gashed open. So I took off my shirt and wrapped it around his head and applied pressure. Just the words he kept repeating were, get me out, get me out, get me out. And then when he asked if he was going to die, it broke my heart. Doing good, sir. He completely degloved the top of his scalp. It's just a huge layer that's ripped back, revealing what was underneath, which is essentially skull. If you have a massive injury to the scalp, then there's a chance of massive bleeding. Keep track of how much bleeding is going on. Left pressure 144 over 95. Sir, move your left hand, will you? Squeeze my fingers, will you, on your left hand? Sorry, man. Got nothing. You kind of always hope that there's not some injury to the spinal cord that's causing that. Sir, can you hear me? Try to wiggle your toes. He does not move his left side. They're consulting neurosurgery about the spine. X-ray left humerus. Distal third transverse humerus fracture. CT chest, head and C-spine. CAT scan is definitely going to be our friend in this diagnosis. It's going to let us know if there's any bleeding in his brain. It's going to let us know if there's any injuries in his spinal cord. You got to get a good picture of your spine. We want to make sure that your neck is not broken. Right. Kelly, and you're his wife? Okay, we're getting CAT scans right now. He's awake talking to us. Hey, you're a great job. We're all done. We're gonna get you out, okay? I spoke with Kelly. I'm gonna call her so you can talk to her, okay? He didn't have a severe injury to the brain, but he did have a fracture in his neck, and it showed that he had some injury to the spinal cord. She's on the phone with you right now, hon. Um, Kelly said that she loves you. She'll be there as soon as she can. How you doing, Kev? Oh, I'm good. Okay, what's the most most bothersome thing for you? Oh, well, it's the back of my head. Uh -huh. What we're going to do is take you back to the operating room. I'm going to continue talking with you. We're going to scoot you safely off the surface, okay. get all this fixed up for you, okay. get you back to doing what you normally do in a nice, healthy way. All right. So, He's got a broken neck. What we have to do is fix the laceration here so he stops the extensive blood loss without disturbing his neck. If he's moved wrong or anything like that, it could damage the cord more. It's not a good situation to have decreased blood flow. We are going to adjust the blood flow so his organs get properly perfused. And when you do that, the patients recover a lot faster. 
Our hospital is one of the few centers in the United States that's doing this. You're looking better. Part one of a long journey. Yeah. The head injury, it was really hard to see. It was, I knew that it was very large, but it was very difficult. Um, he broke his humerus right about here. And the humerus has a nerve that runs right across where that fracture was. It's intact right now. If it stops working, he'll be only able to grab like that. Our goal is to get the bone realigned. The bone lines up very nicely. Two months to heal the bone. He still has significant deficit in terms of his ability to move his leg and foot. What we're planning to do is actually take out the C6 vertebra, and by decompressing it, uh, we're going to give him the best chance we can uh, to have a full recovery. So we're just resecting the vertebra here. When we have to resect an entire vertebra, obviously we're working right around the spinal cord and sensitive nerves, so uh, it is a complex operation. We've taken the entire vertebra out, and now we're going to reconstruct this with this titanium spacer. We're going to gradually expand this cage a little bit. So we're going to take a picture here and make sure we like the alignment. Yeah, the top is good. Looks fantastic. I'm just so happy that it just wasn't their time to go. Push, 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 push. That's it. There you are. How are you feeling right now? I feel so successful that I, I, I can barely stand it. <laughs> <laughs> On three, we're going to stand, yep. OK? Yeah. One, two, and three. Are you smiling? No. He's smiling. Yeah. When you see patients progress, it just, it makes my job just, just that much more like worthwhile. I want us to try to take a couple steps. I can't move it. Yeah, can you can. Going. Keep going. Ooh. Lean to me. Yeah, lean, lean into, into that walker. walker. There, there we go. go. And then take a step with the right. There Good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There, there go. good. Right. Good job. And just, you know, hearing him talk about his kids, wanting to get back home with his wife and his four kids, and um, it's just pretty neat experience. I feel like I went through like a prize fight or something. There's just not many parts of my body that don't hurt. I know it's hard. That's part of the Baby step process, one step at a time. You can just see it in his dad's eyes, even this morning. OK, what are you guys going to do? Do you think he's going to walk? When he puts his mind to something and really decides that's what he wants to do, you best get out of his way or help him. Hey, there she is. Love you, baby. Ah. He's an amazing father. He's overly proud. He's always bragging about his boys. Those four infectious boys Something about him. Put your hand in his. Let's see if he tweezes your hand. Yeah, come on. Yeah, oh. I see the fingers moving. Hard. Yeah, it's a slow process. And I'm just amazed at how much you're doing. Well, I haven't exactly run the halls yet. <laughs> 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 Thank you guys so much. Luke and I have a bond that will never be broken. He's a marathon swimmer. He's a Superman kind of guy. I swim the English Channel. I've swum around the island of Manhattan, and I've swum the Catalina Channel. The three of those events are the triple crown of open water swimming. There's only been 50 or 60 people that have managed to do all three of those, and that's pretty cool. Well, we like to ride trails on our quads and motorcycles. 
his tire sunk into a really soft spot and the whole bike flipped and he went over the handlebars. And he sustained a pretty severe fracture of his left clavicle. It really, he really looked hurt. You can see here there's three large fragments. This fragment in the middle is actually called a butterfly fragment. We call that because it's been completely separated from both ends of the bone. He immediately said, well, this is as bad as they get. The shoulder is like two inches shorter than this shoulder because of the way the break happened. We need your shoulders to work for swimming. He doesn't kick his way through the water. He pulls his way with his shoulders. If you damage your shoulders, you're not a long distance swimmer. Swimming is a real big part of my life. When I'm going to sleep at night, I'm swimming in the ocean. And I hope I get to do it because I've been worrying that, oh my God, I might not get better. And that's not okay. Go ahead and put it down. Thank you. What causes most of the pain is the bone fragments moving. We'll use a metal plate and screws to uh, get the pieces back where they belong. We're ready for you. And it will also restore the length to his clavicle, which will help regain the normal shoulder biomechanics, which will be important to his long distance swimming. You ready to proceed, Doc? Thank you. The left side is correct. As an orthopedic surgeon, we're in a very happy branch of medicine because we can restore function that is lost, bringing back quality of life. I'm trying to find the ends of the different fracture fragments so we can piece it back together. And then we'll place some small screws and then the plate. And it looks like this may come together pretty nicely here. <laughs> I'm going to check it under x-ray. That actually looks almost like one piece now. We're able to restore the length of the clavicle and uh, restore the alignment of the fragments. And I invite you to close your eyes. There's something about music therapy. It's not a performance. It's a music experience that you facilitate. And whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. Wow. You're with the patient and you have this connection with them. I'm not normally a believer. <laughs> I'm a very, I'm an engineer, you know. Um, the, the fluff and stuff doesn't really get to do it for me, but oh my God, that was really relaxing and spectacular. So, so yeah, I think doing some in the pool with the kickboard would be great. He was very intent, well, we have to get you back to swimming. And I appreciate that he shared that concern because that's the way I feel. I mean, I got to get back. I just can't wait. I miss it. So, show me what you got. This way? Mm-hmm. Our goal is to first restore the full motion of the shoulder, and then the strength, and then the endurance as well. Don't let me move your arm. You know, a lot of times you're talking to them on an emotional level, what's going on in their lives, their children, their parents. We're not just healing the body, we're helping with the soul and the mind as well. It's great. So we're just trying to prolong the life of your sport, your passion. My hope for Dave is that he is inspired to keep doing what he loves to do for as long as he can do it. I'm out there swimming, and I'm not even thinking about my shoulder now. The next things that I'd like to do are the Straits of Gibraltar, where you swim from Spain to Morocco. I think that sounds pretty romantic. You're back. Poor old man, I did okay. Well done, sir. Well done. It was a very, very hot day. You know, I just thought it was heat stroke. I thought, you know what, Lisa? You need to hurry up and cool this man off. Coming out, 44-year-old male, chest pain, moving from Hague up progressively. I was scared for his life. As soon as we got him on the monitor, we knew. Right here is the injury to the heart. His EKG showed up on my phone, and so we can see simultaneously what's going on electrocardiographically. Every second, counts with a heart attack. Door to balloon time, right? The minute the patient hits the door to the minute that the balloon is inflated to try to keep that artery open. The less time we take, the less damage there is to that heart muscle. This device is a game changer. Some patients only have minutes to live if they don't get treated. He's in ventricular tachycardia right now, which means that his heart is beating so fast that it doesn't effectively pump. So he went from a pressure of 140 systolic down to probably 50 or 60. 
At about that level, there's really not enough blood pressure to support perfusion to the brain. And if it goes on long enough, you'll see brain damage. So I have a 275 by 30. Eva. X-ray. The right artery had a clot, and the circumflex marginal artery also had a clot in it. Balloon's going in. He'll insert a balloon in the blockage to open it up. Going up. And then we'll have what we call reperfusion. We sucked out the clot. We put a balloon stents. John, you're doing OK, buddy. Your artery is already open. You're doing better, John. Pain starts to go away now. The national standard for door to balloon time is 60 minutes. In John's case, we were able to do this in 21 minutes. So you clot at both major arteries. It's unusual. That's why you're having so much pain. Seals out, seals in. We were able to open them both. You're a lucky guy. This part of the vessel here was completely missing. This is what it's supposed to look like. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. I was afraid. I was afraid that this was my last, my last day. This is going to show the doctor if you have any damage to the heart. So what happened? I was uh, lifting hay bales. Right now, I live on a ranch. The animals are so cool. It's very therapeutic. You know, I've been, you know really been getting into that. So and they love me too. I could tell because I have a long parade of them everywhere I go. They follow me. <laughs> like, you know, I feel like Noah. <laughs> Here's a guy, 44 years old, had a two-vessel heart attack, leaving with no damage to his heart, walking out two days later. And any chest pains? No, none. If I had a light switch, I'd turn it off and then just remind you what could have happened because we don't always get that light switch turned back on, right? right, right. I'm already so, going to work on my diet, and I'm going to work on my exercise, get these mu muscles going again. <laughs> I'm just glad that he has a second chance in life. Hey, Danny. How you doing this morning, huh? There you go, Adam. There you go. They missed me. They missed me. <laughs> it, was good to, it was good to see them again. I'm, I'm grateful for my life. It's good to be alive. I know these people. These people are my neighbors. These are my friends. These are my family. These are the people in my community. Seeing the effect of what you do on your neighbors makes it all worth it. Come on, guys. Time to eat. It's OK, Jack. <laughs> this little baby was delivered about an hour ago. Nice and healthy, wonderful vital signs. Chin to your chest. Curl up around the baby, bear down for 10 seconds. Nobody anticipates having any problems when they have a baby, but it's something that is real. It can happen. Baby A is head down, baby B is butt down, and head is up. The safest way to deliver is by doing a cesarean section. I'm scared. Don't be nervous. Everything is going to be fine. You're going to be a grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's crazy. I just can't get the smile off my face. You know, I got two baby girls. That's crazy. Penelope was born at 25 weeks gestation. She was one pound, six ounces. Um, this is our miracle baby. Everybody around here calls her feisty, and I'm like, yes, you know, good. She's going to pull through, and she's going to make it. Penelope's been given a fighting chance to to uh, be able to do something great. I'm proud of you. Just keep fighting, OK? She'll probably be on the breathing tube for another week, and then she'll learn to breathe on her own. And from there, it gets better and better. She's beautiful. She's perfect. <laughs> she's a blessing. I just, um. I wish I could take her spot. How are you doing? Doing OK? Yeah. It's a little scary. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Mom was in labor, and the baby's heart rate had a massive deceleration, meaning the baby's heart rate dropped for a prolonged period of time. Based on his initial appearance, the doctors decided to initiate hypothermia treatment in order to protect his brain from any trauma that may have occurred from his abrupt delivery. We cool the body down, and we find that that helps with long-term outcomes for the brain. Okay. It's new technology that can prevent a lifetime of disability. A healthy baby and a healthy mom in the end. That's our goal, and that's what we do best. We're doing skin to skin right now. I don't want to ever let it go. 
We went with Vanessa, and Summer's her middle name, so Vanessa Summer June. I just know how much you love him and love me, and it's just it really a sacred, special experience. Well, I've been uh, the man she's blamed for this whole ordeal for the last <laughs> nine months, so I think she's gonna be thanking me here in a little bit. Her first name will be Taylor. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. We're like 90% positive oh, yeah. about that. There is a spot on Encinitas Beach that has these stairs. If I go down to the bottom, I can't walk back up those stairs. I have a bionic, you know, thing controlling my heart. I guess it's more credible or trustable than my own heart. I start to feel my pulse instead of like doom, doom, doom. It's like doom. And he said, I feel like my heart's skipping a beat. And then my body's having to like make up for it. And he could feel that happening in his chest. And I open the door, you know, with my last breath, you know, mom, dad, something's wrong. He says, dad, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It revs, you can hear it revving. I can hear Brandon moaning in the background. When it hits him, you, not only do you see it, you hear it, it goes like, choo I knew we were in trouble. He said, it's coming again. It's coming again. Boom! And, you, and I feel my body lift up off the bed and move, you know, a couple feet to the left, and then you fall back on the bed. It was like one of the most gut-wrenching things I'd ever seen because I, uh, I was five seconds from getting dressed to go to work. I'm getting shocked by this thing. I'm having this crash course in death. They've made it very clear to us that this device has saved his life five times now. Brandon, at the age of eight, was diagnosed with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Which pretty much means no football. But <laughs> that's all it meant to me at that, at that time. All right, let's take a listen. His condition has led to an abnormal heart rhythm called atrial fibrillation. Unfortunately for Brandon, this has caused him to receive shocks from his defibrillator. Uh, which was put in to treat life-threatening arrhythmias from the bottom part of his heart. During this whole thing, I've thought about dying every day, you know? This isn't something as a parent that you should have to think about with your 20-year-old. I never know when it's gonna be our last day with him. Brandon is about to undergo a procedure called catheter ablation, where we burn the electrical tissue that's causing him to have atrial fibrillation. This may be one in a series of procedures that he undergoes over the next three months. I just want him to be a normal kid. Go out with your friends, go to the movies, just do normal things. And I feel like a lot of that's been robbed from him. When's the next time I'm gonna go into AFib? When's the next time it's gonna shock me? Good luck to you, buddy. Thank you. Am I gonna survive through tonight? What happens if it has to keep shocking me over and over and over again? Go on, please. All right, coming back. Up. Our heart is governed by electrical current. We're able to go into the heart in a minimally invasive way and zap these abnormal electrical connections. 25 watts, please. Previous to this type of procedure, the patient would have to go for open heart surgery. We're able to now do it just by the introduction of a catheter into the groin. And septal needle on the field. Coming back on, 30 watts. The red dots represent that that tissue is burnt, it's ablated, it should be dead. And the goal is to connect all of those red dots in a circle around the veins. Any sort of firing or electrical activity that happens inside the pulmonary veins will not conduct back into the left atrium. Because this is not open heart surgery, Brandon will be able to leave the hospital tomorrow, and his recovery time will be significantly less. It's honestly been the hardest year of our life. I can't imagine my life without him, and that's what's been hard. I have to think about that. I see that pain in her, so I try my hardest to, like, if I can get a breath, make a joke. If I can breathe, I'm going to make a joke about it. You sound like a plan. You guys mixed up the modeling class with the nursing class. <laughs> when you get a patient like Brandon that is 
so sweet and that, you know, is going through something so difficult. It's great that everything has gone so well, especially after the year he's had. It really does make me love what I do. Your blood pressure is doing great, buddy. How are you feeling, though? I'm feeling like we only have, like, 30 minutes before you go. It's very true, but I'll be back in the morning, 7 a.m. It's a date. All right. Everything was going great for about two months. A week or two ago, I got a phone call at work, and it was a student at Miracosta saying the ambulance was called to come pick him up. I've been having AFib again. Um, was it three times? Yes. This is a common occurrence. The electrical pathways can reconnect and require a second procedure. Bring it here, bring it here. <laughs> Oh, I'd say it's right. good to see. It is good to see you, but it's, you know. I, it's hard. It's hard because I love all these people, but I never want to see you guys again. I know. I. He rolls yeah. with the punches. He may get knocked down from time to time. He gets up and he keeps moving. Let's go. Hey, Happy birthday. Look at what you're doing on your 21st birthday. birthday. <laughs> he has such a big heart in so many different ways. So we just induced an arrhythmia. When someone goes into atrial fibrillation, the top chamber of the heart can beat anywhere from 400 to 600 beats per minute. OK, go on. 36, 366. All's good as it relates to atrial fibrillation today. We still have our challenges ahead of us. We're optimistic, but at the same time realistic that this is a lifelong battle that he and I will have to deal with. Things went well. Yeah. Got the AFib. I've learned a heavy lesson through all this. Even in times of hardship, you can't focus on death so much. You have to just live your life while you have it. I'm looking forward to stability. I'm looking forward to a weight off my shoulders. I don't have to worry as much about, is tomorrow going to come for me? Life's good. It actually is the greatest gift we could ever be given, to know that you've made that kind of impact on someone's life. It's about that time where I stop having problems and just live and be cool and be 21. Turns out, I'm like a mini Tiger Woods. <laughs> Love it. I can't, I can't even express how happy I am to be here. A big old truck can't hurt me, right? <laughs> Right? I'm like, get off me, truck. I gotta come home and see my boys. To all of us, love is an expression of life. We want our patients to be better, to leave, to have a full life, to go back to their families, their passions, what inspires them, and what they can be. Welcome to the world, little girl. I'm so excited to meet you. The Sharp Experience begins when you choose a physician at 1-800-82-SHARP or sharp.com. Sharp accepts almost all health insurance.